Hey guys, PDF and Peach Tools. Today I want to talk about the importance of draining the uh, water out of your uh, air compressor. Well, I got an email from someone the other day and they said he uh, bought an air compressor about 18 months ago and it's uh, leaking in the tank. So uh, I got him to check it out and uh, sure enough uh, he had a rust hole in the bottom of his air compressor tank which sucks really. It means you've got to pull it to pieces and weld it up and do all sorts of crap. So I thought I'd just show, uh, show you fellas a quick and easy way how to get the water drained out of your uh, compressor. Anyway guys, have a look at the video, see what you think. Remember if you like my video, subscribe and drop me a line. This is the air compressor I use guys, it's uh, an old uh, 20 gallon air compressor. As you can see it's got um, three pumping heads on it and uh, it's uh, the maximum you can run on single phase. It's got a uh, three horsepower motor on it and it's running in 20 gallons. Um, is the uh, storage tank here so that gives you basically enough for um for most stuff you want to do in the workshop plasma cutting if you turn the uh, air consumption down a bit it runs not too bad and spray painting and that sort of thing it's all good um you know it works works fine whether you want to uh use it on a nail gun or whatever it's, it's ideal for a nail gun and other bits and pieces but the trouble that um you guys seem to be having is that the tanks seem to rust out for some reason. Um, like I said, this is this is about probably five years old, and um, yeah, there hasn't rusted. This tank hasn't rusted out, but I um, clean the water out of it every um, about every week when I use it. If you can read that there, I don't know if you can read that there. Daily, what you're supposed to do there. Weekly, monthly, and um, every three months. So daily, you uh, you basically uh, when you use it, clear the water out. That's what I'd do anyway. Um, it's, it's no big deal, and uh, it's easy to do, and it might save yourself a lot of grief because um, if you've got to pull these things to pieces and weld the bottom of the tanks, they're pretty well sucky, really. Righto, guys. As you can see, I've got my uh, got my compressor on the workbench there, like that. So we'll go and find the drain bung, and we'll let you have a look at it. So what you need to do is you, the very bottom of your tank, you're going to find it. So go to the bottom of your tank, and it doesn't matter what compressor you've got, it'll be on the bottom of your tank. There it is there. There, really easy to do, really easy to find. Like that. There it is, the drain bung there, and I've also noticed this. Have you noticed this? And uh, take notice of that, guys, because you can ruin a perfectly good air tank by not doing it and it's a bit of a pain in the ass to change it and it's expensive for no reason at all just for the fact that you didn't empty this this little valve here can cause you major a lot of issues anyway what you do before you uh, before you um, try and drain it is turn the compressor on so we'll do that now so I've turned my compressor on as you can see it's going and what we want to do is charge up the tank until it gets a bit of pressure in it so it blows the air out of the uh, out of the valve on the bottom of the tank so just wait a second until she stops, and then we'll have a look. So there we go, it's just stopped, so we'll uh, go down to the valve now. Once again, go down the bottom. Go to the very bottom of your compressor, it doesn't matter what compressor you've got, it's going to be right on the bottom, as low as you can get on, the, uh, on your tank, that's where the valve's going to be. So we've got the valve here. So there's the valve there. Get your pliers or whatever you're going to do and undo it with. This hasn't got a... Uh, uh, hex on it, so it's just a uh, finger tight thing, so we undo it. As you can see, it's starting to come out now. You might pay to put your earmuffs on when you do this. And then we'll see what happens. We'll see how much sits in there. It's after a week, so we'll let it go and see what happens. Yeah, that's fine now, so we'll just do it back up again. 
And this is a brass fitting, so watch you don't strip it. But it strips quite easy. I've got another video up the top there if you want to have a look. If you've ever had trouble starting, you can press when you're using an extension cord because it's, uh, I don't think they're really designed to run on extension cords, so I'll put that video link up the top there and you can have a look at that as well. But that's the amount of water that you get in there after one week. So uh, you imagine that sitting in your tank for six or seven months, what it does, it eats out all the inside of your tank here, and then your compressor becomes absolutely useless. So for the fact of just unscrewing that screw and doing that once a week, um, yeah, you can save yourself a whole lot of money and a whole lot of grief. Hi guys, so that's uh, that's about it really, as simple as one, two, three, isn't it? Just drain the water and you won't have any issues. Just do it at least once a week and you won't have to go and buy yourself a new tank for your compressor. Um, this is a 20 gallon compressor, it's good for my workshop, but like I say, it's got a three horsepower motor on it and uh, it's about as big as you can run on single phase. But um, I use it for uh, spray painting and running with nail guns, staple guns, bread, gun, all sorts of bits and pieces and plasma cutting of course. Um, anyway guys, if you like my video, subscribe, remember to subscribe, drop me a note, you might have had some issues with your compressor. And remember what I said about the uh, about the uh, running these things on the extension cords, I don't think they really like it, I've got another video there too, so remember to have a look at that. Anyway guys, catch you next time.